Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll explore the main dashboard and its key components, learn how to create and organize projects and tasks, upload datasets, and see how to assign annotators to specific jobs and track their progress. Let's get started. At the top of the screen, you'll find the navigation panel. The projects, tasks, and jobs tabs are directly related to the annotation process. They help organize the workflow and manage task distribution among annotators. We'll take a closer look at these pages later in the video. For now, let's briefly review the other sections. Cloud Storages allows you to connect external cloud storage services for data management. Request shows the status of various operations such as task creation, annotation export, and import. Models contains built-in models for automatic and semi-automatic annotation and also allows you to upload your own models. On the top right, there are links to the CVAT GitHub repository and the official documentation. Clicking on the username opens a drop-down menu with additional information and settings. In the organization section, you can create a new organization, modify the current one, or switch between organizations. Here you can open settings. We'll explore these settings in detail in the second part of the video. Additional options include subscription management, sending support requests, viewing information about the tool, changing your password, logging out of your account. Let's return to the tasks page. This is the first page users see when they open CVAT. It displays all the tasks you have created. If you're working within an organization rather than a personal workspace, it also shows tasks that have been assigned to you by other team members. The page includes tools for searching, sorting, as well as quick filters and advanced filtering. The search bar allows you to find tasks by their full name or by partial matches. You don't need to type the exact name. Entering keywords or fragments separated by spaces is enough. Sorting can be done using different parameters. By default, tasks are sorted by ID in descending order, meaning the newest tasks appear at the top. You can add or remove sorting criteria by dragging them and change the sorting order, ascending or descending, by clicking the icon on the right. Quick filters allow you to instantly display tasks assigned to you, tasks created by you, and tasks that are still in progress. The advanced filter gives you more control. You can set simple conditions, for example, filter by a specific task ID or define more complex rules. For instance, you can search for tasks with an ID greater than a certain value. You can also exclude specific tasks by name using the NOT operator and placing them in a separate filter group. When there are many tasks in the system, these tools make it much easier to find what you need quickly. It's important to note that search, sorting, and filtering are available not only on the tasks page, but also on the projects, jobs, cloud storages, and models pages. This makes navigating through large amounts of data significantly more efficient. The unified filtering system makes CVAT's interface highly flexible. Users can choose the criteria that matter to them, such as name, author, creation date, ID, or status, and the system adapts accordingly. Now let's take a look at how tasks are organized in CVAT. The system is structured hierarchically. At the top level are projects. Within each project, you can create tasks. Each task can be split into jobs, which is where the actual annotation process takes place. It's important to understand that tasks are independent units and can be created without being linked to a project. However, jobs are not autonomous. They are always part of a specific task. You cannot create or delete a job separately from its parent task. Let's assume we have a task that includes a set of images where we need to annotate animals. For this type of task, we don't plan to create any additional jobs, meaning this will be a single standalone task. Let's create such a task. On the task page, click the plus button and then select create a new task. After that, a form will open that needs to be filled out. In this tutorial, we won't go through all the parameters and what they mean. Instead, we'll focus on the basic fields required to create a task. The first thing to enter is the task name. Let's call it animal annotation task. Next, you can choose a project to assign this task to. However, for this example, we don't need a project, so we'll skip this step. Now we need to add labels. 
Click Add Label and enter the name of the first label, then click Continue to create it. Then enter the next label name and click Continue again. After adding the last label, click Cancel to finish the label creation process. You should now see all the labels listed in the form. Labels are essentially tags or categories that we assign to annotated objects. Sometimes they are also referred to as classes. Let's move on. Next, we need to add the images that we want to annotate. You can either click the upload area to select files from your computer, or simply drag and drop the files into the area. Finally, click Submit and Open to start the task creation process and open the task when it's ready. We are now on the task page. At the very top, there's a button that lets us return to the list of all tasks. Let's click on it, and we're back on the tasks page. Here we can see the task we just created. We can see the task ID, the task name, who created it, and when, as well as the last updated date. To the right, there's a progress bar showing how many jobs are in the task and what their current statuses are. Further to the right, there's the Actions button, where we will find the following available operations, importing annotations, exporting the dataset, launching auto annotation, creating a backup, viewing analytics, running a quality check, moving the task to a project, or deleting it. Now, let's go back and open the task again by clicking Open. Let's take a look at the structure of the task page. We again see the Actions button. It includes the same operations we saw earlier on the task page. Next to it is the task name, a sample image from the uploaded dataset, the task ID, and information about who created it and when. We also see who the task is assigned to this can be any user from your organization. You can leave it empty if you plan to work on it yourself. Next is the task description section. By clicking edit, we can add task instructions. The Issue Tracker field can contain a link to an external task management system. Then we have the Label Constructor. It works the same as during task creation. Here you can see all labels currently in the task, and you can delete or edit them if needed. Below we see the list of jobs related to this task. You can apply sorting and filters to this list. That's not necessary now since there's only one job, but in a larger task with dozens or even hundreds of jobs, these tools become very useful. Let's look at what's shown for a job. We have the job ID and a link to open it. Clicking the ID takes us straight into the workspace where annotation is done. Let's return to the task page. Below the job ID, we see when the job was created and last updated. Next, who it's assigned to. Just like with the main task, you can assign the job to any organization member or leave it unassigned if you're working on it yourself. We won't go into detail about user roles here, but in short, assigning someone at the task level gives them access to all jobs in the task. Assigning at the project level gives access to all tasks and jobs within the project, but assigning someone only to a job limits their access to just that job. They won't even be able to open the parent task. This access hierarchy helps maintain control and security, making sure only the right people can modify important elements. CVOD also supports a role system that offers more flexibility, but we won't cover that in this material. Let's move on. The stage field shows the current phase of the job. It can be annotation, validation, or acceptance. Each stage has a state value which can be new, in progress, rejected, or completed. Keep in mind, when the stage changes, the state resets back to new. On the right, we see the duration of the job. Note that this is not the actual time the annotator worked on it, it reflects how long the job has existed in annotation mode. To see real working time, we go to Analytics, where CVAT tracks activity based on user interactions. Next, we see the number of frames in the job. In parentheses, the percentage of the entire data set is shown. We also see the start and end frame for this job. Remember, frame numbering starts from zero. So if there are 10 frames, the first is frame zero and the last is frame nine. Finally, clicking the three dots opens a menu with more job actions you can import or export annotations or view job analytics. Let's move on to the jobs page. Here we can see the same job that we saw on the task page. It's visible to us because we are the creators of the task. Most of the information shown here is the same as on the task page. We can see the job ID, its dimension, whether it's 2D or 3D, the current stage and status, the number of frames, and the person the job is assigned to. By clicking the three dots on the right, we can access the same set of actions. Go to the task, import and export annotation, 
and View Analytics. If we click on the job tile itself, we'll be taken to the annotation interface. We'll go over that part a bit later. Let's go to the projects page. Projects play an important role in organizing annotation work. Simply put, a project brings together all tasks that share the same set of labels and annotation rules. Let's see how it works. Imagine we have a traffic annotation project where we need to label different types of vehicles. At the same time, we have several sets of images that need to be annotated separately. A project allows us to group these tasks under one umbrella. Let's create a project. Click the plus icon and then select Create a new project. We enter the project name and use the label constructor to add all required labels. Then click Submit and Continue. The project is now created. Let's go back to the projects page. Projects are shown as tiles. Each tile includes a sample image from the dataset in our case. It's still empty since we haven't created any tasks yet. The project name, who created it, and the date it was last updated. Let's click on our project tile to open it. The layout is similar to a task page. We see the project title, project ID, who created it, and when, and who it's assigned to. You can also add a project level instruction, which will apply to all tasks created within this project. Below that, we see the label constructor with the labels we added. These labels can be edited, deleted, or new ones can be added if needed. Underneath, we'll see a list of tasks linked to this project. Currently, we don't have any, so let's create two. Click the plus icon, then choose Create a new task. We now see the standard task creation form with two key differences. First, we can add a subset name if needed. Second, we don't have to add labels. The project's labels are automatically used. Let's upload some images and click Submit and continue to create the first task and immediately proceed to the next one. We'll now create the second task. This time, we want it to be split into four jobs. To do that, in the Advanced Configuration section, we set the segment size to 5. We're using 20 images, so setting a segment size of 5 means each job will contain 5 images. Now we create the task. Let's return to the project. Now we have two tasks, and one of them has been split into four jobs. You can see this by the job indicator. Let's open it. As we can see, there are four jobs that can be distributed among several annotators if needed. Each job contains five frames and a different frame range. The first job covers frames 0 to 4, the second job covers frames 5 to 9, then 10 to 14, and so on. The number of jobs and their frame ranges depend on the task settings at the moment of creation, and these settings can't be changed afterward. All created tasks and jobs also appear on the Tasks and Jobs pages. These pages show every task and job, even if they belong to different projects. We've now reviewed the basic CVOT interface pages and how to create projects, tasks, and jobs. If you're an annotator, you'll most likely be assigned jobs directly. This means that in most cases, you will only see jobs on the jobs page and not on the tasks or projects pages, unless the task or project has been specifically assigned to you or you created them yourself. So the jobs page is the main workspace for annotators. Here you can see which tasks are currently assigned to you and are waiting to be annotated. If this list gets too long, don't forget to use the filters, for example, the quick filter not completed to show only jobs that are new or still in progress.